urinary symptoms on testosterone and anabolic steroids. This is so important. And a lot of young men are not gonna relate to this, but men in their 30s and older that are on even a little testosterone, certainly steroids, are going to wanna watch this because these drugs affect the pelvic region, the testicles and the prostate. I start off with Dr. Ziegler and Dianabol way back in the 1950s where supposedly Dr. Ziegler was traveling with the Russians or working with the Russians, weightlifting team. Of course, they were using steroids. And he saw they were using some testosterone-derived drugs, either suspension or esters. And they had BPH or they obstructed. This. Supposedly, some of the weightlifters had to have a turp or they had to have catheters because they couldn't pee. I'm not calling this doctor a liar, but young men in their 20s, these are the weightlifters at that age, of course, still that age, they're very young men. Olympic weightlifting is tough, your back hurts, woo. So these are young guys. They're using testosterone esters or even DHT derived drugs or nor 19, whatever drugs were coming out this time because some of them were coming out already. And they had obstruction in the prostate, I don't know. But anyway, if you see the story, they go back to the scientist and they say, we need a drug that is low in androgenicity, secondary male sex characteristics, to affect the prostate less and more anabolic. Dianabol, what a story, see that video. So what do I see? with androgens in the prostate and the pelvic in the urinary tract. I see BPH. There's no question that testosterone is going to lead to a worsened cases of early but non-prostatic hyperplasia. A few weeks ago, I have a 37-year-old man that has obviously some bad genetics and has a propensity for having very uh, large prostate He's on TRT for about 10 years. He was obstructed, went to the hospital, and they end up having problems getting the catheter in, but they finally got a Coudet catheter in him. He did well. And then within a week later, he had a turp procedure like you would do for an old man where they bore it out. And I'm not saying the doctors did the wrong procedure. Did he not do it? Did he not need it? But this is a young man on testosterone for maybe 10 years, and he had to have a turp. So... Other men undergoing procedures for enlarged prostates. We have to really understand this, what's going on. It's not just testosterone versus DHT and using blockers on this. I see men having infections. I see men having repeat infections, like urinary tract infections, prostatitis. So they have to go for further procedures, apart from a TERP, which is a very aggressive boring out of the prostate and they're not going to do that that's more of a surgical procedure so we have things like the euro lift we have laser we have something called prostate artery embolization oh that's usually for a non-surgical patient with a very large prostate who's older i want to be careful now we're talking about the prostate you're gonna have to have some enlargement if you're on trt not to mention steroids in your future. I'm just telling you guys, it's gonna happen. Cancer is real. Prostate cancer is real. If you live long enough without testosterone, it looks like you're gonna have more prostate cancer than a man who's middle-aged or older on testosterone. It seems like the incidence of prostate cancer is lower. This we have to be careful with because I've still seen men on TRT that have prostate cancer. It's all about looking at the PSA and having great urologists knowing how to screen, not just with digital rectal exams, with MRIs, and we have other types of tests, which I talk about all the time on my other videos. These men are gonna suffer with prostatitis, bladder infections, which is a urinary tract infection, even up north into the kidney infections, all from androgens and even testosterone. Now, getting into pelvic pain is something that's very esoteric and I have to work with urology doctors on. From androgens, 
Is it from conversion to DHT? Is it from too much estrogen? I know you guys want to give comments. Let the comments rip. Let's hear about this. We don't know. What affects the prostate? Is it a change? Is it testicular changes? Is it volume changes? The atrophy in the pelvic floor. I've seen cases of hydronephrosis where, the, where there's so much back pressure from pressure and urine being trapped in the bladder that it pushes up pressure. It goes up into the kidney and the kidney expands. The outer aspect of the kidney gets pressurized and pushed up. Now I've seen several cases of interstitial cystitis. What is the role? I've seen it also in men that are not on antigens. This is a rare, this interstitial cystitis is very, very rare. Maybe an autoimmune type. We don't fully understand what it is, but I'm seeing more and more men that have been diagnosed with it. Is it an improper diagnosis? I'm not a urologist. I can't make that diagnosis. Protecting men that are on antigens. This is a very complex scenario and it's a complex video. Thank you guys for understanding this. Then you have BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia. You have lower urinary tract symptoms that may not be BPH related. Again, the atrophy, the changes in the pelvic region from using all these drugs. It's not like me protecting you on the heart medications. That's easy, right? Coronary artery disease. You can get the coronary artery calcium score. You can get an echocardiogram, family history. Look at your blood pressure, your heart rate. You can look at impaired fasting glucose, prediabetes, diabetes. You can look at the lipids. We could treat these with medicines, blood pressure medicine, cholesterol, prediabetes, metformin, all these medicines. But if you look at men in the pelvic region, it's such a taboo area, even urologists. We really don't know what to do. I'm not a urologist. I work with these doctors. So is there a testicular downregulation? What happens? Why does the prostate grow like this on androgen? Is it straight up from DHT? Is it testosterone? Other androgens? Is it the accumulation and too much estrogen? What can we do about it? DHT blockers are going to affect the sex drive in the brain. We know we'd love to use them more for hair loss, but we have a condition called finasteride syndrome, maybe dutasteride syndrome, depression, anxiety. There's evidence that even DHT blockers can lead to a worsened prostate malignancy, but there's been support that that's not true, but it's certainly gonna be controversial. What do we do about this? I like to use lowest possible doses and I love PD-5 inhibitors like Cialis and other medications, not just giving Flomax, not putting good doctors down, but in the end of the day, managing man that has BPH and pelvic floor symptoms, get a urologist, they get a screen, they can do very good work down in your pelvic region. We come together and we put together a regimen together to protect you. You use the lowest dose of testosterone that can make your life the best quality of life. Limit toxic anabolic steroids. Guys, Tren, I just think is very toxic. I know it's very strong. It works great, but it can accumulate doses. It can affect your brain sexually after Tren. How is sex? And I definitely feel that Tren and other drugs, not to mention cumulatively, can have adverse effects on your prostate and your pelvic pain. Now, this is very complicated. This is going to be more the middle age and the older guys. I want to get a lot of stuff out here. Please give me all your questions and your comments. Men come to me in the end, not just with the hair loss, the gyno, the, the heart disease, the brain fog, the anxiety, the depression. They come to me in the end with this, the pelvic region which I have to work with urology doctors on. But a lot of times I'm working with you guys all over the world, we don't have urologists. So thank you so much, gentlemen, for trusting me on this. In the end of the day, you're gonna be very concerned for your prostate and for your pelvis. Thank you so much.